Prof. Okun a review secret about P2B. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. To get notified when we post hot juicy news updates, please click on the notification bell. He is one of the most meticulous personality I've ever met. I've met in my life, says the professor. Could you please tell us a little about yourself? She replied. Well, my name is Chinyere Stella Okuna. I'm a professor of mass communication. I'm the first female professor of mass communication in Nigeria and in sub-Saharan Africa. I began teaching journalism at IMT, Institute of Management Technology, Enugu. I am sure you know IMT. Yes, I do. From there, I went to UNISIC, Namdeazikiwe University, and that was years ago. And while teaching in UNISIC, I was appointed commissioner by P2B, and I took a leave of absence from the university. I was there for eight years, and the funny thing is that when the appointment came, I did not even know him. I never met him. The first time I met him was at the swearing-in ceremony. I mean a swearing-in ceremony. Wait, madam, you did not meet him until your swearing-in ceremony. She replied, I tell you, I did not meet him until that day. Tell me something here. How did Mr. B find you and how was your first interaction with him? She replied, he said he saw my CV and I, didn't, I don't even know who gave it to him. He must have seen my CV somewhere. He said he saw my CV as he was trying to assemble a team of people who were going to work with him. You know in Nigeria when politicians are in power, they usually appoint people they know. But that is not B2B. He said when he saw my CV, he knew this woman is good and must work with me. I did not look him. I did not know him like I told you. It was at a swearing-in ceremony that I saw him for the first time. You mean you accepted an appointment from someone you did not know just like that? She replied. I almost said no. I was terrified. I am sure you know in Nigeria when you're either the commissioner for information or minister of information. If your boss doesn't do well as governor or as president. War betide you, you're finished. This is because you're going to become a propagandist. You're beginning to lie to cover up his deficiencies. I knew as a professor of mass communication, he was most likely going to appoint me as commissioner for information. And I was frightened and almost said no. It was colleagues and family members who said, go in there and give it a shot. And I went. And that was because I did not know him. I didn't know whether he was going to do well. I didn't know whether I was going to be turned into a liar and a propagandist. After the encouragement of colleagues and family, I told myself, okay, go there and do your best. And if it doesn't do well, you can leave. Let me tell you something and maybe on a lighter note. After we were sworn in, one day I walked into his office with a copy of one of the subjects I teach as a journalism educator. It was a book on the ethics of mass communication, which I thought for years. You mean you wanted to teach him communication or journalism ethics or what? She replied. I walked into his office that day and he was looking at me. I said, Your Excellency, I do not know you and you do not even know me. Let me just tell you I'm not going to lie for you. If you don't do well, I will not lie for you. As I said that, I gave a copy of the book, which I said already autographed to him, and said, This is my teaching area and if you don't do well, I'm not going to lie for you. He laughed. He was started somehow and said he was going to do well. I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. You know Nigerians hardly resigned from appointment. She replied, yes, I know that. Most of the things people do in government is driven by greed. People are there no matter how badly the governor or the president their boss is doing. They stick in there because of the money. So that was how we began. I was apprehensive until we began to work. He struck out his vision and it made sense to me. And when we began working, you know information. I wasn't comfortable in that job because the man did not want us to talk about what he was doing. He was doing quite well despite all the challenges. He was impeached. The House of Assembly was filled with people in the opposition party. They were from the People's Democratic Party. He had nobody in the House of Assembly. So it was a very tough assignment for him. But somehow he was doing well. He had a brilliant vision. So, we began working and I began to relax. When we came in sometime 2006 or thereabout, there were so many challenges. Anambra was such a fractious place. 
We didn't even settle down to work before his impeachment and removal from office because of money issues. The second removal was in 2007, when they had an election, when his tenure was not over yet. He went to court. People eventually, people thought he was going to waste his time. Eventually, he came back and we began working sometime in 2008. But I'm telling you, he did well. Let me ask you a question here. He was removed about two times, right? She replied, yes, that is true. First, he won the election and it was not even declared and he went to court and he got his mandate. That was number one. I am sure you know that he won the election in 2003 and somebody else was declared the winner. Tell me about it, ma'am. She replied, he was, and yes, he went to court for three years and more. Were you aware when he was in court after the 2003 election? She replied, I did not know him at all, no. I didn't know him before we came into office. We had won the election in 2003, and I'm sure you've heard about this. Yes, I did. The swore increase in Gigi of the People Democratic Party at the time. Then he, Obi, went to court to recover his mandate. He was in court for three years. So from 2003 to... So from 2003, he was in court until 2006. This was when he recovered the mandate and came into office as governor. So when I saw the vision was okay. I'm sure you know at that time the world was trying to implement the MDGs, Millennium Development Goals. He adopted the MDGs as his vision and each time people asked him, he said he looked at the MDGs program and saw that it contained all he wanted to do for an Amber State. You know the MDGs had eight goals and eight and those eight goals delivered dividends of democracy. So you mean he used the MDGs as his blueprint? She replied. He developed a strategy called AIDS, Anambra Integrated Development Strategy, which was also multi-sectoral and adopted the MDGs and began to implement them in all sectors. He was delivering the MDGs in all the sectors. Honestly, it was an awesome, awesome government. I'm not saying this because I was a part of it. I don't want it to sound as if you're doing prison worship. This is a serious interview. She replied, okay, let me tell you, let me tell you. You know I began as Commissioner for Information. That was what I found while researching you. She replied, We started in 2006 and by early 2009, he said that I was a very meticulous planner and he was going to take me away from information and put me somewhere else. And I said, look at me. I'm a professional of communication. We have really put me that I'll be relevant. And as we were talking, he created a new ministry of planning and budget by merging planning and budget and made me Commissioner. While still working there, he made me the chairman of the MDG's implementation committee. Achieving the MDG's was his vision, remember? You said so. I made the chairman of the implementation committee, and that was from 2009. He removed me from information. Even our Anglican bishop and some of our priests were saying, this is one person we have in government that was visible. How can he change her? What is economic planning? Nobody ever heard about that kind of plan. And they're taking this woman away from a very high-profile ministry and they're putting her in a dead place. Well, this interview was... <laughs> it's, it's really, really beautiful. Well, uh, well, uh, other candidates, oh yeah, oh, people we know in now, we're going to come forward. Okay, on this note, you've come to the end of the news. So thank you for turning in to listen. Until I come here next time, enjoy the rest of the day.